So we must do two things, two great things together to encompass that enormous new view that lies before us, but to encompass it within the framework of science, to see it within the whole categorical framework of science, and to see that these two are not separate, but that they are wedded. The bigness of the idea, the newness of the idea, the greatness of it is one with the structure of science, the structure of being itself. He wants to show that love, the seven love parables really, that love is bestowing the fullest measure of life the optimum of life, that love optimizes life, maximizes life, maximizes the reward, the result, the fulfillment of life. How does it do that? It does it through a total commitment to the principle, a total commitment to the principle. What is that optimization now, you see? To be totally committed, really, to that principle is to receive in return the superabundance of, of life, the superabundance of love. So he gives those parables. We'll go through them quickly as they illustrate this commitment and the reward. You have first the parable of the sower, right? And love is going to fulfill the fullness of life at each point along the way. So in that parable of the sower, you remember you had the sower and there was the, the, the good soil and the soil that wasn't so good and the soil that wasn't deep enough and that the sower had to take the seed, the good seed, and put it in the right soil. Beautiful illustration of mind, huh? Put the seed in the right soil. Don't put it superficially, too close to the top, or just uh, on the parched soil. If you put it on the parched soil, it will be blown away. The, uh, the conditions have to be right for that ground. That consciousness has to be uh, prepared for the seed of life, the seed of mind. And if we do that, then what is brought forth? It brings forth itself a hundredfold. Isn't that beautiful? It brings forth a hundredfold. So you get the superfoldedness, so to say, of life at the point of love, the abundance of life. Then you had the parable of the tares and the wheat and of separating rightly. So this is a parable of spirit, isn't it? And it says, uh, tells us about uh, going out on the day of harvest and gathering that wheat in, separating it from the tares, and bringing the wheat into the barn, into that safe haven while the tares are burnt up. And it says, if you do that, you commit yourself to that process, that method of separation, nothing will be lost. It's the optimization of the harvest process. To harvest the spiritual idea within your own consciousness. You'll bring in the whole harvest 
and it won't be mixed up with anything else. It'll be absolutely pure, absolutely pure. And then the parable of soul, that the kingdom of heaven is like a, a mustard seed. It's The mustard seed is the tiniest seed, but it becomes the greatest uh, of trees. It's, I think, doesn't it say there that the birds nest in, in it and all the things that go on in that tree that has come forth from the very smallest seed. So to say, love can take the smallest seed of spirituality and through the method of that third day, you know, of soul, that method of the seed within itself, through those means, can multiply it without end until it becomes the greatest. This is the f- truth about us. This is the fact about us. That in the kingdom of heaven, in that kingdom, in that realm of the word as Christianity, we can say, or the kingdom of heaven, in, when we dwell in that realm, all of these laws are laws that operate for us, that work for us. How love oversees us, how love guarantees the fullness of life for us, the greatest ends for us. And so we see it through mind, through the parable of the sower, we see it through spirit, the um, parable of the tares and the wheat, and we see it through soul, through the mustard seed and the growing of the mustard seed. And finally, uh, not finally, but next, he says, and the kingdom of heaven is like a, a leaven. Now this is a principle, a touch of principle. A leaven which a woman took. So it's your womanhood sense then that takes the leaven and the one principle, that one principle begins to leaven everything. And that is going on, isn't it? That everything is changed by this leaven. It's the leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened. This is going on, actually, we we live moment by moment within that kingdom of heaven which is changing our world changing our universe what is changing it science is changing it the divine principle of science is changing it leavening everything retranslating everything reinterpreting everything so all the sciences all the principles small p every lump so to say has that leaven that seed of science in it. Mrs. Eddy refers to that reference, does she, doesn't she, in her, uh, in her sixth chapter, Science, Theology, and Medicine. Uh, I believe that's the opening uh, scriptural note, is it not? Isn't that the scriptural note in uh, the sixth? <laughs> it's all right. You don't have to look it up. In the sixth uh, chapter, because she equates her her mission with the mission of the woman taking that leaven and putting it into three measures of meal. And the chapter, of course, is science, theology, and medicine. These are the three great lumps <laughs> that are being changed by the science of being, the science of Christian science, which is reinterpreting everything in that universe, in that, in that realm, the realm in which we live right here on earth. You see, we don't have to go somewhere to experience the kingdom of heaven. It's here with us. The kingdom of heaven is within you. <laughs> and is working alive and well and working throughout the world to, to change everything, a leaven 
what does 11 do? It changes the chemical properties of, the, of those lumps, turns them into, it's where something is becoming something else, isn't it? Being transformed into something else. And that's exactly what is going on. But it takes our womanhood to see that. That's what love says. Then we come to life. And it's the parable of the treasure hidden in the field. The kingdom of heaven is like uh, a treasure that is hidden, hidden in the field. How can we get that treasure? <laughs> I love that, that it's hidden in the field. How can we have it? We, first of all, have to sell everything else, give up our earthly all for it, for this treasure. Then we see that we you can utilize the redundancy principle of life. Love says, use the redundancy principle of life and buy the whole field. See that? <laughs> because if you, if you buy the whole field, if you own the whole field, you see that you own the treasure in the field, right? Wherever that treasure is, it's yours. You have it. This is what love says to us about science. It says you have to take the whole field to, to get the specific, to get the part. Take the whole, then you have all the parts, all the treasures in the field. All other uh, desires, all other inclinations, all other leadings and motives and interests have to be given up for the one, for that one object. So love says uh, it's, it's a story of total engagement. If you have total engagement, then you, you, will, you can't miss, you can't help but have the absolute fullness and superabundance of, of life. Then we see that there is a further parable that is uh, from the standpoint of truth. And it's the parable of the pearl of great price, the pearl without price. It's not even of great price, it's without price. It's so priceless, you see, the pearl. So the man that wanted that pearl, the, a man that wanted that pearl had to again sell all that he had, give up everything and buy the one pearl it's a great change in standpoint I think from, from metaphysics to science you see it's the one pearl before it was the one field with the treasure in it now it's the one pearl and so it, we are seeing something more about science namely that no single truth, no uh, amount of single truths can ever add up to the one truth, to the one truth, which implies and integrates all truths. So if you buy that, the one pearl of truth itself, the whole, the whole of truth, you have all the truths within it. See, love wants to give you all it wants to to give us all it wants to give us the whole and then we come to the next parable this is the parable of love from the standpoint of love and it's about the uh, man who goes fishing and he takes his net a net and it says and that net gathered of every kind don't you see that every time we come to a net, it's something about love, it uh, implies love, it implies that sense of the systemization of love as a matrix, a matrix, a consciousness really of science within us that is 
universal, but it is a net. It's scientifically universal with no breaks in that net. And that net can catch everything. It catches everything. That net, as as it says, gathered of every kind, all kinds, all sorts. So it it catches um, every kind of fish, everything that is out there, draws it in so that it is like a universal attractor. It attracts, you see that science at the point of love attracts all mentalities, all types, uh, because it has that for which everyone is looking, everyone is seeking. And that's the truth about the science of being science of being as a system, as a structure, as a network, gives everything, everyone its place value, their place value. You'll always find your place within the science of being. You'll always find where you are within the science of being. Because those categories are so universal, so general, that they catch every specific, every individual. They cover all individual cases. And those seven are a beautiful parables, really, that have a terrific sense of love in them, of love taking care of everything, of love which says, if, you, if your standpoint is love, if you are totally committed, totally one, with this idea, with the idea of the science of being. If you're totally committed, you see, uh, as we are, if we look at that first tone of mind, totally committed to be the offspring of the parent mind, totally committed to that baptism, to becoming baptized with the, um, by the Spirit of God, totally committed to that third stage of identifying ourselves with with God and uh, becoming the idea of the principle, uh, becoming identified with the divine principle and understanding that principle, taking it up as the, the fundamental principle from which we work and operate and demonstrate everything in our experience. Then we come to life and Love says, and the fullness of life is something more than you could ever find in your human material existence. All the things that make you happy. I think Mr. Dorley speaks somewhere about all the toys, all the toys, all the human toys, material toys, the things that, that seem to attract us and mean so much to us. Eventually they fade. Eventually they go out. And what is coming in is something so much bigger, so much greater. It is life and the things of life that love is bringing in. Love's bringing in of this complete commitment to the things of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. That this is a realm of superabundance a realm of the fullness of love's, love's bestowals.